Awesome. So uh, welcome to the program coordinators meeting for 2022-23, December edition. Stuff we're going to talk about. Welcome and catch up. Uh, if you're catching on this recording, you just missed that because no point in need to see all that. Um, we're going to take a look at role expectations, new programs, uh, the COVID update, because I know everybody's been curious about that. Um, orientation stuff, setting up the season, and then we're going to do a little bit of snow line training at the end. And I'll answer any questions anybody has. Uh, so let's dive. Here we go. Uh, roles of the program coordinator. And if I'm missing anything, please let me know. Um, but this is kind of the list that uh, we've come up with. So some of your responsibilities are going to be just doing like the weekly scheduling that we're going to take a look at tonight. Point of contact for all the students and instructor that are involved in the program. Uh, know a little bit about Snowline, uh, which is also called Ski Portal, which gets a little confusing. The official title is Snowline, but every time you look at the web address, it says Ski Portal. Vast.skiportal.org is actually how do you get to that if you're not familiar. Uh, or you can actually just go on vast.ca, our website. And in the upper right hand corner, there's a button that says Snowline. And if you hit that, you'll also click there. Um, we're going to, uh, oops. Other things, obviously, safety is always one of our biggest concerns on the entire mountain. So you act as the, the safety watch peoples. Uh, you're a resource for all the instructors. So lots of you have been around lots of lessons. Uh, several of you are already CADs too, which is great. So you can be out on the snow and helping uh, people troubleshoot what's going on for their students. A um, little bit of admin work, but we really try and, try and minimize that. Uh, thank you mostly to Alex. Thank you, Alex. Um, who's just shut, shooting down all sorts of stuff for us right now. It's great. Um, you need to be cheerful and have some fun because people like to do stuff that's fun. So you get to set the tone in your own program. Then there's a little bit of holding instructors accountable, um, just making sure people are on time and uh, doing what they're saying they're doing and making sure that they're filling out the paperwork that uh, we need to. I don't know, do you still call it paperwork when it's on a computer? What do you call it when it's not? I think it's just administrative work. Administrative work, okay. This is why I have a translator behind me. It's very important. Um, and then there's a little bit of promotion stuff that happens, uh, just kind of filling people in with what's going on uh, with VAS. Is there anything else that previous program coordinators would say I need to add to that list? Or does that encompass a lot of what's there? What about liaisoning with uh, ski patrol? Or I don't know how you do that on gross. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I try to head up most of that stuff. I don't think it's something that program coordinators need to do. Um, Mark, you've been, like, how do I say that? I was going to say, Mark, you've been around so long, but that sounds wrong. Mark, you're so experienced and savvy. You have relationships with everybody at the mountain. Um, Mark and I actually had the chance to go and just do a Sitski evacuation with the patrol up at Seymour. So I've got all that video and I'll put it together in the next couple of weeks and uh, send out to everybody to see actually how it happens. So it's quite cool. Anything else anybody think of or we're good-ish? I will move on then. If you think of something, let me know. I can always go back and add it into this list so that we're, we're more complete. Uh, programs and stuff. So those are all the programs that we're running this year. Um, not a whole lot has changed from last year. I thought it'd be really nice just to have a really boring year, you know, like just run six weeks of programming and run all the programs we plan to run. Um, Monday night snowboard, Tuesday night ASD, ski and Cypress Intermediate, Wednesday learn to ski, Seymour, sit ski and BC Def, which was a pilot program for us last year, which was super successful. So we're going to run it again. Um, there was also a snowshoe in there somewhere, which was not successful. So it got ousted. We're not doing it anymore. Uh, Thursday nights, we have our intermediate sit ski up at Grouse, Blue Street's practice sessions. Friday is our only kind of new big thing. We now have a, the, kind of a snow club. And it was designed to be a place where friends and families that don't really need a lot of support or uh, even teaching anymore and just need somewhere to come and be on the snow and enjoy uh, and maybe use some of our equipment. Now they can come to this Friday night club. Uh, core participant comes and then parents uh, come as volunteers and anybody under 15 comes as a secondary student. And we've just made it super cheap for families and friends to get up there just to uh, enjoy and, and love the this winter life. So Saturdays, learn to ski, uh, which we've always had, the Blue Streaks coaching sessions and the Seymour sit ski. Sunday, we've got learn to ski and learn to snowboard and the all mountain, uh, it says youth program, but you know what, I'm gonna get rid of the word the youth. Now we're just letting anybody that 
wants to come in and hang out in small groups and get lots and lots of mileage and maybe just a little bit of coaching. Um, it's a great progression step for people. Then we still have our drop-ins, which we're committed to. A lot of that is helping out uh, school programs that are coming uh, to all three of the mountains. Then we have our Tetra Ski Anytime. We just had three brand new instructors uh, working on their certification for the Tetra Ski. Um, so that takes us now to six instructors, which is great, uh, making it more and more accessible for people. And then we're going to do the family and peer-to-peer -peer program uh, again, which we've been, we ran last year uh, with, I think, most success. Might a little bit of frustration, but um, just such a good way to really get groups of people learning how to ski and snowboard together so they can move away from bass as quickly as possible and go and enjoy the mountains. A uh, little COVID update. It's canceled. That's it. We've canceled COVID. We're not doing it. Good. That's the update. Um, it is my strong belief that nothing COVID is going to get in our way this year based on the fact that it's already Christmas and the world seems to be behaving pretty typically. Uh, there is no guideline from Sport PC, from Via Sport, from our provincial or national organizations on any precautions we should be taking or whether or not we need to mandate if people have their vaccinations or any of it. So just life back to normal. Goodness. Um, let's chat a little bit about orientations and how those kind of work. So one of the big things that happens uh, in the third week of January this year, I think starting on this 19th, that sound right? That's why we have calendars. I feel like it's January 19th is the first one. Uh, it is true wrong. 16th. Yeah. Uh, which I think is, is the snowboard group, isn't it? Are you guys on the 16th? They've just both gone totally quiet. They're already drinking. Uh, That's both right. Okay, good. Yep. So that'll be our first one. And then that whole week um, is orientations. Uh, basically, it's an opportunity to have everybody that uh, is going to be an instructor or volunteer with your group come on up and look at a whole bunch of stuff. Um, last year, uh, I did a video. Did anybody like the video? Was it effective? Did it save you time and energy to not have to go through a whole bunch of stuff? It was great. Yeah, I think it was good. Yeah, it worked great. I think I, I liked it too. The only question was making sure that people actually watched it. We don't know if they actually did. Yeah, and and uh, and so I can tell you that that will be a problem again this year, but not next year. So we're actually CADS is working on an MLS system that will allow us to put in content and attach it to someone's profile and ensure that they have done certain trainings, which will be wonderful. Uh, but this year it will be a little bit of a shot in the dark again. So my thought was just to use the same video and I'll go in and edit some text over top of some of the frames if anything has changed. Um, like the fact that there's no longer a snowshoe program. Um, yeah, but other than that, I, I watched it today and I'm like, I don't know if I could repeat that much fun in one little tightening section without basically just doing the same thing again. So. With your blessing, I will just edit it up a little bit. And I think we let it fly. It is uh, 36 minutes long. It covers a ton of the HR, super not exciting stuff that um, is important to talk about every year, but um, can be a little uh, repetitive. So I think this allows people just to do it at their own pace and, and go through it. Um, my question would be, uh, in your orientations, what kind of stuff do you like to do and can we share any ideas with each other on this call that stuff that you've added in or taken away or or how you make it a little more engaging the floor is now yours for the sit ski program obviously we look at sit ski setup that's specific to the sit ski so it's quite a bit of stuff there so that's um, usually a big focus for us cool so having resources on that for sure that could be helpful okay Last year, we actually I had COVID, so I missed the orientation. But um, because we have so many people, we just broke our folks up into different groups and had them go to different areas because there were so many new people that weren't familiar with rentals. They're not familiar with um, with the mountain. Um, getting them to actually go into the chalet, like this is where the washrooms are, like doing that kind of stuff. We made them 
kind of go out and do that. Um, I think we gave them some things to chat about in their groups. Um, and we tried to have like a leader for each group so that there would be somebody that could kind of help facilitate whatever was supposed to happen. And I wasn't there, but I, I think it worked pretty well. Was that, did we do a scavenger hunt last year? It was something like that. Like like they gave a list like, of like 10 things that yeah, you could go yeah. do in a small group. There was. Just, like, go and like, go meet patrol, go find out where the patrol building was, get the phone number, um, go look at where the Alpine responsibility code is written in different areas. Um, Post a picture online. Yeah. With one of them because we had the new uh, album system. Did anybody else use that sort of little scavenger hunt system as part of their orientation or? We did that for the Wednesday, James. And you did it, did you liked it? It worked? Yeah, yeah, I think it worked. Yeah, we did it on Sunday mornings too. It was good. Yeah. Okay, so we should repeat that. I should put something together again and... Yeah. Just offer it to you as a tool if people want to use it, they can. Again, I, I, I try and give everybody just a lot of breathing room on how they want to do this. I mean, there's some stuff, which I kind of hammered in that video that, that has to be talked about. The rest of it, I know programs, you know, like Adam was saying, Sitsky, they got to spend a lot of time on fitting, you know, give you, give you the space to do the way you want to. Um, but I will make a scavenger hunt again, if that is a good tool. We, we did the small group as well, and it worked really well. Okay. If I, uh, if I just put it on a page um, on the website, does that save everybody from having to then print anything or do anything? Like I can just post it up for a couple of weeks and have it there? That would be great. Okay, let's do that. Is uh, it for grouse in particular? No, I tried to make it very vague, um, but it could be like, yeah, go find where all the washrooms are and go and, you know, yeah, go and find the patrol building. Take a picture of yourself and post it to uh, the album on, on our Facebook. Um, figure out what, the, yeah, the telephone number is for patrol. Who are the, I don't know. I I'll, I'll find like it. But. Introduce themselves to the lifties and just kind of yeah. make some of those connections. Yeah. That sounds great. Okay. Yeah. I will... Uh, I will reinvent that or just find it and repost it. One of the two, maybe I'll, yes, I'll do both. Uh, but putting on a webpage, I think makes it easy for them people to access and cool. Um, and then other than that, yeah, I mean, the, you know, it's such a great opportunity for people to get to know each other a little bit. Um, I'm always trying to find different ways for people to connect with people they don't know, because I think it's such a powerful part of what we do. Uh, a little bit of safety, a little bit of equipment, uh, talking about evacuation and how that all works on the mountain that you're on. Um, doing your student cool. assignments obviously happens in your orientation, uh, meeting the partners that people are gonna be with. And then I believe just people get on the snow as fast as you can and go out and check it all out. And if you wanna do a little extra training that night uh, or whatever it is, then I think it's a good opportunity. So James, James Chris, we've never talked about evacuation on Sunday mornings. so. Cool. If there, if there is a desire for us to do that, can you shoot us a bit of information about what we might need to yeah. include? Sure. Because <laughs> we've literally never talked about that. Evac video. I'll find something for you. Done. Thank you. Yeah. Evac video type of uh, James, for uh, Saturday sit ski, we do a lot on organization of our cube because small space, a lot of gear. And if it doesn't get put back correctly, it can be a, quite an issue. I know that can work at Grouse too. Um, I will happily add that. <laughs> yeah. And one is because last year I got surprised when some of my lead instructors didn't know the safety checks on the sit skis yeah. that they should be doing daily. We're gonna adopt your list from Grouse and maybe add a thing or two to it to do safety checks, but that's common with any equipment, right? So it doesn't matter whether it's a ski bra or uh, a pole or whatever the adaptive equipment, there's safety checks that should get done pre-checks before student touches. So just a thought that if my program's got leads that are have gaps, others might too. Cool. Uh, equipment checks. Awesome. Thanks for that. Anything else I'm missing in there that people often talk about? I do also have a, um, I've had a checklist I've had in the past. And I'll find it again and, and send it out to you all. But just kind of 
shows all the stuff that I go over in the video so that you don't have to, and then just be a cue for you. But um, what else, what are the kind of things you want to chat about? James, we also do a, we did a little bit of a, an overview of behavior as communication uh, on the Sunday pro program last year. We have a lot of, we have a lot of nine-year-old boys with ASD. That's yeah. pretty much our program is nine-year-old boys with ASD. Okay. Uh, and so we found that a little bit of an opportunity to talk about what different types of behavior might be uh, communicating was really, really helpful. We've got a, I feel like there's a, a quick like five point handout that I can flip over to you if you want that we used last year. That was really good. That would be amazing. Yeah. And then It'll I can share a lot of discussion. Yeah. Is it, um, <clears throat> is it something that I could make big and make it into a poster and just have it up on the ceiling? Probably. Okay. Let's do that. I'll find it and send it to you. I may need a reminder because yeah, my brain's a bit fogged at the moment, but. Hey Siri, text Chris Duggan. <laughs> Please find me the poster. All right, done. Um, <laughs> Gotta love Siri. Oh, and there's your message. <laughs> Sometimes fast action works. Um, poster is communication. Okay, I love that. Thank you. Yeah, there's a couple of other um, poster type things I'm hoping to make. Uh, one of them is a list of all the skills that you should develop before you leave the learning area. And then all the skills you should learn before you leave the carpet area. So that hopefully we don't get people on runs that they're not quite capable of. So that is a, a bigger challenge uh, on some of the learn to ski and snowboard programs. So uh, I want to make a big poster so that people are just reminded of all the incredible things you can do in a little bit of terrain. It was, uh, I had a chance to go to the CSI convention this year. And we were at Lake Louise and one run was open and it was a green. So for three days, I skied with level fours on a green run. And I can't believe how much I learned never getting off a green run. So I'm, uh, I'm proof in the pudding. Are we good with orientation and kind of some of the things that are there? Uh, like I said, it's, it's really up to you how you want to run it. Uh, I will try and come to a lot of them uh, unless there's uh, double programming but I like to try and make an appearance and come in and support you however I can and just be there for quick answers. But it is, uh, it is totally up to you. And like I said, we've got some tools and I will get them to you uh, in the next 10 days or so. So you can really just start to get your head around what that event is going to look like. But I'll get the scavenger hunt. Uh, I'll get an evac video. I'll get the checklist of things that should be covered. And then, yeah, we'll make some new posters and get some communication uh, up at for sure, Seymour and Grouse, it's a little bit more tricky at Cypress because we don't really have a dedicated space to, uh, to do things. So, Allison, if there's anything you can think of that you would like for me uh, that I can, you know, push out to everybody beforehand, happy to do that. Okay. I'll cool. think on it. I think, can I just mention, I think the one thing that we try to get across to our instructors is that progression doesn't, if you're not, if your student really isn't progressing, it's not a failure. For you as an instructor, like if you don't really get out of the learning area because that's just what your student is going to do, then that's not, it's not like you've done a poor job. Sometimes people just learn differently and some kids or adults will take longer and that's not a bad thing for them. So I think just reminding them that it's, it's okay. Love that. I'll add that in. Setting expectations for a lesson. Thanks. Um, Beautiful. <laughs> Another one, James, uh, module review for your students. So like we've talked about trying to get some of the newbie instructors that may not get CADs to get them their module, at least in sit skiing, but I'm sure that works for other programs as well. I thought you said the word students in the beginning. Did you meet instructors right off the bat? Or yeah, I meant instructors, sorry. Right. Cool, yeah. I just, yeah. Um, yeah, well, and, and so that's, uh, this is that promotion piece of training and things like that. So I'm just working on all the training opportunities we're gonna be able to create this season. And then, yeah, just letting people know about it uh, is gonna be key for sure. So that's great. Uh, all right, let's get on and keep just rolling here. Uh, setting up the season. So I've listed uh, some activities that can happen now. And the next one is some activities that can happen in the next few weeks. <clears throat> And I'll probably flip back and forth here a little bit between 
uh, the slide deck and just looking at Snowline so people can see. I think everybody's probably comfortable-ish with Snowline other than Heather, who is looking like all this, like I have no idea, or I've seen it once or twice, or Heather, are you like on it? You've been playing with it, you know? I kind of have a sense of it. Um, we've done oh. the pairings, so I feel like that helped. Oh, good. Yeah, oh, Heather, amazing. Heather's on it. Heather's a pro. Oh, good. Well then, yeah. maybe I don't need to do this part. That would be amazing. Um, we'll look at a couple things. Oh, what did I just do? That's gonna be bad. Yeah, maybe not. There we go. So uh, if anybody ever just wants to play on Snowline, I hope you know that there is actually a way to do that. So if I uh, look at this one here, there's an address at the top that says beta.skiportal.org. And all of us have the ability to log into this. And it was updated, I think, about a week ago. So it's a pretty fresh copy of exactly what is on our system. But if you log into this, beta.skiportal.org, and if you know your membership number, so for me, you can always just go to your profile and see what your membership number is. Uh, so it'd be members 3168. So if that's what it is, then when you log into beta and it asks for your login, you put uh, capital M and then your membership number. <clears throat> and then for the login, everybody has the same login. It's very complex. It's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And with that, you get into a system where you cannot break anything because nothing is actually live. So you can totally just go in and mess around, which is kind of fun. Uh, or maybe that's just my sick idea of fun. But it definitely allows you just to hit any button and see what happens and, and not worry about it. So when I look at, uh, oh, let's log out of this person. Sorry, please hold. I wonder why that's doing that. Ooh. Okay. Do I just have the wrong number? Am I using my dyslexia again? I am 3168. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's not worry about the last thing I said. Clearly, it's not functional because that is not who I am. So let's just ignore everything I just said about that. I'll just dump that and we'll look at a real live version. Um, some of the activities that we can be taking right now, uh, if you're familiar, I'm sure, or if you don't remember, we can go to tools, coordinator. And then from here, we can go to instructor registration or student registration. And this gives us a list of all the students that are, or all the instructors that are gonna be hanging out with our program. When we get to this top part, there's a whole bunch of drop down things. So if we're looking for instructors, uh, just so you know, other things that are in there, there's volunteers that we don't really have anybody as, friends that we don't use, stakeholders are people that are involved with us but don't have anything to do with on snow. So we use this for different funders and people that buy things from silent auctions and things like that. And then independence is a group uh, that doesn't really apply to us, but uh, if they were just buying a CADS membership because they wanted to go skiing, they would do, through the, do that through BC Adaptive Snow Sports, and that's where you would find them. But for what we're doing, instructors, we're looking for the instructors from this year that uh, have either been accepted or not. So I usually just put all, and then returning would be people that have come with us from previous years or just new members. Again, I just switched that to all. And then I can find a program like Monday Night Snowboard. And this will show me all of our instructors. And when you're looking at this, what you just need to be aware of as a program coordinator is whether or not somebody is completely green. So Wade is all green all across the board. That means everything is set up for the season and you don't have to worry about anything. If we roll down to somebody like Robin, uh, oh, Robin's not returning for some reason. Let me find somebody better. There we go. Megan's a good example. So Megan looks like she's a returning instructor, but she hasn't done her criminal record check. She hasn't done her waivers. She needs to update her profile and she hasn't paid for cats yet. She has a lot going on that needs to happen before she can come and hang out with us. 
if I'm curious to know uh, what she's been up to, all these little icons do different things. The ones that I use the most would be this little person, which is their profile, this one, which shows their account, and this one, which shows what they've last done in the system. So if we click on this, we can see, I'll just make it a little bit bigger here, that she actually has been here already this year. So she was logged in in 2022 and she bought her CADS membership or she said she wanted to buy it, but she didn't pay for it. But everything looks like she's intending to come back. So she selected a program, she's clicked a few things, but lots needs to get done. So I would need to follow up with Megan and see what's going on. The fastest way for me to follow up with Megan, if I want to send her a quick email, uh, this used to be the email button and I had it disengaged because we actually came up with a better, faster system <clears throat> where now I can just uh, click the button here. And when it do that, then this email button magically appears. I could show you that a little bit better if I use somebody who's a hider. So if I want to email Wade and I hit that, now there's an email button there. It allows me to quickly select the people I want to communicate with. Or if I want to talk to my whole group, I can just hit that button and everybody goes there. And if I hit email, we go right to the email tool. While I'm in the email tool, uh, just a couple things. If you haven't recalled all of this, uh, it's automatically going to put in uh, your program email here. So everybody has an email uh, for each program that has several people that it gets sent to. So all of the program coordinators. Subject line, pretty obvious. Um, if you have any extra emails, so if you want an extra one, go to Adam, for example. I could type Adam Tynan in here and it would get fired to him. And then the body, this little question mark shows you all the mnemonic things that exist. So there's a bunch of little short code. If you want the person's first name, then you put hi, square bracket, all caps, first name, square bracket, comma, and it will produce everybody's first name in that email. So first name, last name can be very useful. Um, the one I use probably the most is profile. So if I was going to write to Megan, I'd be like, hi, square bracket, first name, square bracket. I'm just looking at your profile. It looks like there's a bunch of pieces that aren't fixed yet. Hit this link below and it, you go right into it and you can take a look at it. And then below that, I'll put square bracket portal, square bracket, and there'll be a nice link there that goes right to her, into her profile without having to log in at all. So it can be a good way to communicate or fire it off to a whole bunch of people at one time. As you scroll down, <clears throat> or if you have a much bigger screen, it might be on the side, but you can select and deselect all the people that you want to go uh, from that communication. So pretty fast and easy. I'm sure a lot of you have used this. Uh, it is a wonderful tool. And one of the features of it, and we'll see if it got fixed or not, uh, for me anyways, and this will be fixed if it's not active for you, it'll be fixed by tomorrow. But I can just go into my tools, reports, and click on the email and email history. And it will show me all the emails that I've sent and what the body was. So if I need to go in and make the same email again, I can just pick up the body, copy and paste it and go again. And you can see when things are tracked. Sorry, where was that? So you go to tools, reports, email. Oh yeah, we don't have to have that. And then email history. It'll be fixed by tomorrow. Okay. Someone just brought it to my attention uh, the other day and they are working on it, so. The email that gets sent to everybody, that's all individually sent. It's not like BCC'd, it's like an individual email. Correct, yeah, 100%. And it, yep. there's, I noticed one person on that list you selected, mm -hmm. they had opted out of mm -hmm. receiving emails, but that doesn't count the emails that we are sending. Is that correct? If, <clears throat> if I'm doing it the way that uh, we selected everybody on our uh, program registry, yep. then it keeps them in. If I'm like batch mailing everybody to Sunday morning program because I haven't specifically selected it, it will lock them out. Okay. But I can always go in and just click it and override it if I want to. So okay. before I send it, I usually just scroll through and look for any of those. Questions about email stuff? I just James, have a question. Yep. Um, you mentioned that each program has an email that we shall be able to have access to. Is that correct? Ish. How does okay. ish sound? You all have a you all have a sending address, so uh, somebody could send you an email to I think it's Wednesday Ski is yours, and it'll come into that system and then get rerouted to uh, yourself and Brenda. Okay. But there you can't send stuff from it. It's just a rerouter. 
Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, which is why then it's nice to have this because then you can just fire stuff back through here and, and keep it all anonymous if you want to. Um, otherwise, I would suggest possibly creating a secondary Gmail account or something um, so that if you're going to be sending stuff from that, then people aren't getting your personal information unless you just don't care, which is fine too. James, the other thing that we've found super helpful on Sundays is the templates um, yeah. tool. So yep. saving our like introductory welcome to the season um, email as a template. So then you just hit the my templates and plug that back in. Um, plug that back in. It is super, super effective and and really, really easy. We love it. We also have a we also have a oh no, grouse is closed, the sky ride, it's too windy, blah, blah, blah. We have also have like an emergency um, programs canceled email uh, all saved in that template. So it makes it really, really easy if you need to quickly send an email to everyone in the morning. Um, you've got that that uh, email already written. Love it. Cool. cool. Yeah, and that's just accessible by this my template there and you can create stuff. So beautiful, good points. Let's go back just really quickly. Uh, so those are the things that need to happen for instructors. And actually we'll look at one more thing that happens in there, which is accepting CRCs or criminal record checks. So if somebody is yellow like this, opposed to red, red means they haven't done anything. They haven't uploaded anything. Yellow means they have uploaded it and it just needs to be approved. So from this position, I can either just click on here and go to it or I can go to their profile and see it. But from here, it's pretty easy. Click away, it pulls it up. It'll give you the opportunity to view the document, which you should do to make sure that it is negative. So you can just read through. Great, if everything's negative, take a look at the date it was issued. So 22.10.07 in this case. I'll go back and where it says date document, 22.10.07, and then I affirm it. So that's saying, yep, it's great. And by putting in that date, this now starts a clock for three years. So this uh, CRC is good for three years. At the beginning of next season, they will get uh, required to do an affirmation saying that they haven't committed any crimes in the last year. And that goes on for three years until they have to renew it. James, just a quick question on that. Yep. Um, I have a situation where there is an orange uh box to click yep. into it and where the view is there's just a basically like a no sign you know like there, i can't it? actually view it who so is it? who is it yeah uh, this is brooke sanders brooke yeah i just didn't know if that's something you've come across because i just see that's it funny. there brooke sanders to see them. Uh, interesting. So this was done through Sterling. So it looks like it hasn't come back yet. Okay. Yeah, because when it does, oh. it should. It, they should uh, then post in the, the result here. Gotcha. Oh. So guys are orange when they apply for it. Okay. Yeah. All good. Yeah. All right. Thanks. So we could just click this for them, saying, "Yeah, I've sent it in, and waiting for the result." Yeah. Cool. Good question. James, we've also made it a practice on Sunday mornings to not accept criminal record checks for our own family members. So if it's like, because my family also all volunteer, so we've just made it a practice that I won't accept uh, criminal record checks for anyone that has this, the same last name as me. Uh, one of the other program coordinators does that. So that might be a good practice across the board. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think that's a fine idea. I mean, I mean, technically it's all there in black and white. So, you know, if it's positive and you know you accepted it, I, I don't think it's significantly good or bad. But yeah, if it if it avoids any conflict, I'm in. Allison. On that note, I unfortunately, Brett, when I was inputting mine, I put approve, not knowing. So if somebody else could approve mine, that would be great. Yes. Yes is the right answer to almost all things. <laughs> Thank you. If I could learn how to spell Allison, it would be much easier. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, while I'm here, I just if you're not familiar, I'll show you the other way to get in. So you can just hit the CRC, or you can hit their little googly head, which is their full profile. And from here, you can access all sorts of fun tabs about the criminal record check, 
hangs out there. And there you go, done. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, although weirdly, I did that in beta. Let's try that one more time. <laughs> I wonder why I'm somebody different in beta. I wonder if they did something for people's privacy or something. It wouldn't surprise me that they, they retweaked it so that it's not your real name in beta. Uh, check. There you go. No, now I'm still Adeline. <laughs> I wonder what's happened to my profile. Oh, well, we'll deal with that. We'll deal with it after this call. Uh, okay, so uh, other things. So that is good stuff to look at for your instructors. Let's take a look at the student stuff. So students, same thing. We're just trying to get everybody all green right across the board. If they have a waiver of some type, chances are it's probably the medical one, which is fine. Again, you can go and take a look at it, hit more. And the document date doesn't even really matter to tell you the truth. So you can just, well, this one's already accepted. Is it this one, the yellow one? There we go. You can just affirm it and then it goes green for them. So James, I've been deleting those past season ones. Is that correct? It's fine. Yep, either, either. There's a, uh, there's a new thing. I'll show you the new thing because it's quite cool. And we're just, it's just getting fully flushed out. We're not going to have medical forms anymore. Or I shouldn't say that. We're not going to have medical releases anymore with exception of a couple of different diagnoses. But as you check different boxes, depending on what your uh, diagnosis is, then different questions are gonna come up at the bottom that pertain directly to that uh, diagnosis. So for things like uh, spinal cord injury, you'll still need an actual release, uh, but most of them don't, which is just gonna save time and energy for everybody, especially for families that uh, have to spend money if they go get those medical things actually from their doctor. So. And that's a national directive right now. So I'm all for it. Faster, easier, good to go. You should put surgeries in the last 12 months as a box then. Uh, that's a good idea. Yep. It's a really good idea. I must, I'm, I'm in sticky note hell right now. I don't know why. I've got about 40 around my desk. <laughs> Things that just need a little bit of attention when I have a moment. Uh, surgery in 12 months. Layla, you can get James a notebook for Christmas. He has so many notebooks. I just don't know where they are. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that is, notes. <laughs> that is one of the things. So making everybody go green for the students is one part. This is going to be the other part that's going to be really important. <laughs> On their medical, it's going to have Sorry. their height. Uh, and weight, which is part of the information we need for rentals. The other part is going to come down here in program details, which will indicate if they are going to use rentals. So if they're going to use rentals, we need all this information completed. So we need their size of their shoe, their helmet, their ability, and then those three pieces on their medical. So their feet, uh, feet and inches, so their height, and then their weight. And if those things are done, then it becomes very easy for Alex, despite the fact that she might not know how yet, to generate all the information that all the mountains need so that we can get all of the rentals uh, mm -hmm. sorted out. And we will take on all of that, yeah. providing all that information okay. in there. So if you are going to send, uh, oh, that's coming up. We'll talk about that. Did I actually put that in here? Need Things something for now. Yep. Separate Sitsky students onto that. James, because it gets goofy when you start asking people for Sitsky, what kind of board are you using? Is it goofy or not? Or what's your shoe size? That kind of stuff. It's, it confuses people, right? That's my favorite thing is to confuse people. Ah. <laughs> I, uh, the, I don't have a great way to toggle it off, unfortunately, um, based on what uh, snow sport they're doing. So it's just going to live there, unfortunately. Um, but having their shoe size and stuff isn't bad, especially if they show up with not appropriate footwear, then we have already got the information and we can grab boots and things. So I agree. The snowboard question is throws a lot of people off. Accepting people, check their rental information. If that stuff is good to go for all your students, then that's all you need to do right now. 
The other thing I would suggest that we do right now as a now activity is just email your students and your instructors and just say hi, just so they know you're you're there and going to be uh, sorry taking care of them. We field a lot of uh, emails that just say, hey, I haven't heard from anybody. I'm like, it's okay. Programs don't start for like a month. But if you can just, uh, again, use the email tool, shoot out, shoot out a hello to everybody. Again, I would, you know, if you want to make it fast and easy, I can make some templates for you. I don't know if that's useful or not. I've done that in the past. Did anybody use the templates that I send or do you just write your own things? I feel like I used a template. Yeah. That seems like less work for me. Oh, right, it seems like a appreciated. Okay, I will make some email templates uh, in the next day or two so that if you wish to use them, then it makes it uh, an easy, quick step. I'll leave some X's in there where you can fill in your own details, and then uh, that makes it quick and easy. But yeah, just saying hi. Again, we'll we'll use the tools in Snowline so that I can direct people to their profile just to make sure they're all good, and I will ask them to check all of their rental gear if they're going to be renting. So I will create that. Done. Thanks, Layla. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. That's all the actions for now. Let's talk about the actions uh, for soon. So uh, prepare you in your, your, your invitation. Yeah. How about repair your orientation, which we talked about a little bit, but that is something you definitely want to probably meet with the rest of your program coordinators. And then we also want to make our first week of schedules. And I don't know if, does everybody remember how to make schedules? It sounds like Brenda and Heather have already dominated it, despite the fact that I'm about to put more people on their program. <laughs> um, anybody not know how to do it? Should I review it or are you good? Reviewing it would be good. Reviewing it would be good. Quick, okay. quick review. Quick review, here we go. Yeah, quick. Quick, quick and easy. Tools, coordinator, menu. Then we go to the lesson manager and weekly program editor. Again, this will be recorded so you can, you can go to it quickly if you need to. From here, uh, all we're gonna do is just edit a plan which will allow you to start brand new and fresh, select whatever program you want. So if it's uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Let's go that one. Choose tonight, ASD, learn to ski. I hit continue. That's going to populate all of my students and all of my instructors. As I roll over a student, I can take and grab them and throw them in a lesson block. If I need another lesson block, I just hit the plus sign and I get another lesson block. Hey, James, I have a question. Yep. Uh, I have... Uh... More students in my list when I look at my student list than I do when I'm my program editor. Say so one more I, time. You have more I, people in your yeah. When I look at my student list, I have yeah. 20, and then when I go to my plan editor, it shows 17. Cool. Let me make more notes. <laughs> Is it only people who have completed all of their like pay for their CADs or anything like that? Yeah, well, I already talked to our, the admin team, so she's gonna look into it. <laughs> <laughs> uh saturday morning ski i'll take a look at it right after this and see if i can see a pattern saturday morning ski okay uh so that allows me to move the students in and create kind of blocks for them if i If you change the certifications, does that that gives you a different batch of people, though, right? So just one sec. So I just hover over to the student like I am with Ashan right now, and it says he is an alpine skier that needs an ASDCI instructor, which is at least level one and requires only one instructor as a minimum. Um, if it said two instructors, then what it means is that there needs to be two bodies as instructors, but only one of them requires the required certification. So once I know that, then I can go up top here and I can go, cool, let's look at my instructors and say, I need instructors that are Alpine skiers that are ASD level one Alpine skiers. And these people in green are all the people that would qualify for that. So then I can just grab, you know, Dan as an example and chuck him on this lesson. And if I wanted another instructor, 
based on what this is, I mean, this is just level one. Almost everybody should be level one. All these people at the moment do not have certification. So maybe I'm just gonna take Mark and throw him on that lesson as well. So now that's my pairing. Does that make sense? And then I can go back up here if they actually needed a level two ASD. Now a lot fewer instructors, but you definitely have a handful. Great, maybe Sean needs a level two. Great, let's put Joshua in there. And then I can grab another instructor if I need one. Once that's done, so I've filled this out as best I can and made all these choices. Hopefully all of your instructors are now engaged. So you, everybody's got a role. And now I can just save this plan and I can call it whatever I want. Oops, trust training and I hit save. So what this has done is created what is kind of like a stamp. And if I want to take that stamp, I can now go just back one page or back to the plan. And I can pick up the plan I was working with, which is probably right at the very bottom. And I can say, yep, this is actually a plan for the Tuesday program. And, uh, oops, sorry, I'm totally wrong. I don't need to do that top part. I just need to find the plan on the bottom here. So this is actually the stamp that I was just talking about that we created. It is for my Tuesday night program. I put the date I wanted on. So let's say the 22nd of February, if that's what I was gonna do. And I just hit copy plan to schedule. And it schedules everybody that's on that. And then the next week I would go back and I'm like, great, I'm gonna go back and look at this plan and edit it. And you know what? It turns out that Josh is not a great fit. Let's get rid of Josh. And uh, it's actually Derek is the better instructor for that. So now I go back and save this. Great. And now go back out and I've got a new stamp. So I can pick it again and now I can stamp it on the following week, which would be March 1st. And I can stamp it there. Does that make sense? Yeah, I have the same problem as uh, Derek does. I don't have all of my students listed on here. Cool. I will look into it. So some something is something is amiss. So I will take a look at that right now. Questions uh, about that? That's I mean the really quick overview, but no, just an observation. I noticed there when you went into the other section, yeah, it has like it says student level versus yeah. it should be instructor level. So that threw me initially see down there where you can select level one level two level three level four it's a yeah. student level it should be instructor level yeah ish sure yeah i'm not disagreeing with you it, it's what what level do we think the student needs does, does the student need somebody that's a cads too right this okay. is i think the way they've done it or the way they're thinking about yeah. it because this is all the students discipline because when I saw it first, I was just like, are we talking about ASD here? What's going on? It threw me for a minute, you know? Then it just made sense because it was four levels, but it wasn't super intuitive straight away. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I, I don't disagree with you. We could probably have better definition around it. But yeah, it's all about the student. And then the reason this there's they talk about the instructor at the bottom is that the, we do have some programs where there are skiers and snowboarders and sit skiers. So I could look through this and go, cool, well, you know, do I have any skiers? Great. Oh, do I have any snowboarders that could do this role? Or do I have any sit skiers that could do this role and assign them from there? So, cool. Questions? When you copy that, yeah. When you copy that plan to schedule, does that fire out emails to? No, it does no. not. No. Oh. So um, as, as that is being created, all instructors are, and you've maybe even noticed it, like if you go to about me and you go my calendar, now it would have anything that you've copied on there would be on their list of things to do. So it'll be on their calendar now. Okay. Yeah. So that's how they can see what's going on or if they've had any changes, they can just come here and click on something and they'll see the list. They'll see the, the it'll look like this now for each lesson where it'll tell you the instructors that are involved, the student, they can go right into the student log, so on and so forth. So, and there's a training for them that uh, is included in that 
uh, hit video training that I do that talks about how you can learn about all this stuff. Okay, so they'll look, they'll go to look rather than us sending updates. Yep. Kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Great. And I mean, if you're making a drastic change, I might shoot them an email just to say, hey, I've changed some things. And again, you could just do it to your whole group and say, hey, psh, go to about me and check, you know, my calendar and see if there's been any changes in your thing. Here's how to access your profile, square bracket, profile, square bracket. <laughs> okay, good. sounds good. All right. So a question, uh, James. Hello? Um, I have a question for you. Yep. So when people are setting up the profile, they can indicate preference on how to communicate, whether it's text or email. Yep. So now if I'm going through this system and sending them an email, is the system smart enough to send them a text instead? No. So the, the only automated text uh, responses at the moment, and I'll show you what Mark is talking about. I can do it on me. So if I go to my profile, and you go down to your settings at the very bottom, there's a part that says, text me lesson reminders. So for people that are doing drop-in lessons, that will, uh, that will text them a reminder because it's a specialized type of lesson, but the weekly programs, because they're every week, we don't bother with it. But if they're doing one-offs, then they'll get a, uh, they'll get a reminder. Um, or you could email me the, the lesson reminder. And then the other one that's on there, uh, you can put email me if I cancel it. No, what is it? There's one, or maybe it's not even on here. Maybe we just set it as automatic now. Or if they don't complete their lesson log, they get text. We just text people until they do it. So that used yeah, to be an well, option here, but it's gone. It's been a gap for my program because myself and my co-coordinator are old school and email is a new thing to us. So email is a, a new thing to you? <laughs> yeah, well, relatively. I'm I'm fairly good at it now, but texting I don't do a lot of, right? So, yeah. but we're missing communicating with a lot of our volunteers because they're not looking at their emails. They're right. waiting for a text. So it's something we have to adjust to, and I'm just throwing it out for others. There, I think there are some people like in our age group, Mark, that are bypassing email altogether and going straight to text. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just, and it's hard to keep up with text because like lately I've been finding text messages that I received like two days ago that I'm just finding out about now because I have my phone on silent for that. <laughs> can Rob set it up so that you can text out yeah. of the line instead of email? That's what I'm just gonna, I just made a note about that. I'm just gonna see if there's any way that we can text directly from Snowline. Like yeah. if we wanted to shoot like a last minute message or something like, oh my God, the mountain just closed or something like that. So let me, let me find out about that one. I'll get back to you. Okay. Good question. Cool. Uh, let's keep rolling a little bit here. Unless anybody has questions about what we're playing with. Uh, so yeah, making your first week schedule is going to be good and preparing for orientation will be great. So. so are you going to clear out the old schedules that are in there? Would you like me to clear out all the old well, schedules? I guess I have to look at it, but because when we start posting new ones, then it's just going to get messier, isn't it? So why don't I suggest this? So from here, when we're in this, this uh, planning tool, if you go down to the bottom, you will find all of the old things. If there is something that is associated to your program and you're not using it, please just click on it and delete it. So like the test one that I had, sorry, you can't quite see that box. So you can just click on it and just hit delete and it makes it disappear. So if you're not using it, please delete it because I don't want to accidentally do something that you've been working on if it's something that you've already started. Like deleting the Sunday AM ski master, don't delete that. <laughs> right, see? So I'll just let, I'll let you all, but you should only have, there should be like one thing that you're doing. Like it shouldn't be the same, you know, the, there's a bunch like Saturday, Sitsky with a date on it. You shouldn't need to have the date on it because as soon as you save it, it's a new version. It's the latest version that you've saved. So good question. All right. Uh, well, we're on the topic. We're kind of sideways on the topic. Um, I set most programs to 25 students this year. 
with the exception of a couple that right as we were about to open registration, I was concerned we didn't have enough volunteers. And then we got a pile more volunteers. So we're over 550 volunteers right now, which is a lot. Um, so a few numbers are going to adjust over the next week and we're gonna invite some more people uh, to the Wednesday program and the Tuesday night program, both at Grouse uh, with, with all of your blessings. Good, no comments, I like that. And the look says Dave, it all. We can't add anyone else to Sunday right now. I'm not gonna add any more. I'm not gonna add anybody to Saturday or Sundays. As, as long as we add in like long weekends, we can make this, we can make it work with what we have. But yeah. if we add in anyone else, we're, we're dubious on family day long weekend and the first weekend uh, leading up to spring break. The only program, the only two programs I'm going to add to you are just the, the Tuesday and Wednesday night at Krauss. So, and it's because we have a small problem. Heather, do you know the problem? You have 104 instructors. Yeah, 25 students is not going to keep them happy. We would love some of those instructors to come on Sunday mornings. We're very fun. I, I've already put out that email saying, hey, if anybody would like to move from this, that would be amazing. And uh, we didn't get a lot of uptake. So I'm going to try and increase the number of students you have. And then I'm probably going to come out on Wednesday nights and help get everything organized because I'll be there for that uh, Tuesday or with the BC DEP program already. So then I'll just help and make sure everybody's under control. But we'll maybe Brenda and Heather and I can chat, chat about some strategies, but we might actually have to split when people arrive, just so it doesn't get too crazy in the yurt. But fun problems, not for this moment. No. Uh, others, other snow line training. We talked about how to log in. Uh, actually, you know, just has everybody been able to log in and have the right security? If anybody doesn't, please just call me or text me and say, fix my security, and I will jump on it as fast as I can. It's way faster than writing me an email or trying to call me or anything. Because um, regardless of where I am, I can do it from my phone. It only takes a few seconds. So if you find you don't have all the superpowers, uh, something has gone wrong and easy to fix. Um, registries we looked at, uh, find someone as a tool. If anybody can't find somebody in the system for whatever reason, if you just go to the coordinator tab, it's right there, it's called find someone and you can get any piece of data you have, first name, last name, their membership number, an email address, telephone number, and usually they'll pop up in the system pretty quickly. Uh, confirming medical stuff and CRCs, we already talked about. Email tool, we already talked about. And the scheduling. Uh, oh, we family program full? Is the, is the family program full? No. Last year where we couldn't. Not all of the parent profiles. And so when we were pairing students, or sometimes just attached to the student's name, they didn't always show up. They weren't on our instructor list. This year, are all signing up as instructors as well so we can assign them no so we had trouble communicating with some of the people okay i have a new idea okay um so i have all of these family members right now uh they're going to be coming up in the first two weeks of january to get some lessons so anybody that's basically over the age of 16 that uh, has never skied or snowboarded or has a little bit can come and get a couple lessons before they come and join the family program. And then there's all these peer to peers that uh, are hanging out, uh, which are all kids under 16 that uh, wanna come and join somebody in a lesson. So my newest thought is that uh, I'm gonna go in uh, to their profiles. So the family member or peer to peer or and put the core student name also there in brackets. And then I'm just gonna add them into your program. So they're gonna look like a student, but you'll know that because the, the matching name is there, then you can just put them together on the same lesson. Okay, yeah, that works. Because then when we do communications, then it gets blasted out to everybody. They become just part of the circle. And then at the end of the season, I'll just have to go in and move them out again. So that it doesn't affect my numbers for what really happened in the season. But they get the student emails, not the instructor emails. Correct. Perfect. That's exactly. Does that work for everybody without getting too crazy about it? Brenda's giving me the look like, oh, James, I don't know. It was super confusing because it had multiple people. We had family program. We had peer-to-peer. -peer. It was 
super confusing trying to figure out who was where. Yep. But I feel like the communication around the family program could maybe be a little bit tighter because we had some where the family was just treating it like a respite program and they would go ski and then their the kid is with the instructors, which wasn't really the Thomas. intent. Yeah, it was like a family of like eight people. Yeah. Yep. Um, and they kind of dropped off the kid and then they went skiing. So, you know, we didn't really do anything about it. It was only three weeks long yep. the season, but I don't know if that's how you want to handle that. If you care what the expectation is, because it was difficult for the instructors to manage and for us to. You know. Other thoughts and. Hey, James, I got one question. I have to actually leave the meeting here. I'm getting punted from the room I'm in. Um, is there a VAS Cup this year? Yes. Okay. So uh, guys, you'll send that out or is it on the calendar? Before you go, uh, we can just flip here really quickly and then we can jump back to our conversation. But some important dates. Uh, all the training information will be going out in a newsletter uh, before Christmas, so in the next couple of days. Uh, Wrap-up party, March 3rd, which is going to be a Friday night. So we're gonna try and get everybody up the mountain just to goof off and hang out and have a good time before everybody goes in a million different directions. Uh, Vast Snowfest is happening the following Saturday, so on the 11th. Uh, details will be coming about that. Uh, the chairperson is over my shoulder, so if anybody wants to uh, do some helpful things, uh, there'll be some communication coming out about that in the newsletter as well. And then uh, the festival is happening March 19th to 24th in Kimberley this year. So if anybody does, doesn't know what festival is, it's an opportunity for often families to go on a ski vacation and get the support they need for a family member, where a bunch of instructors from right across Canada come out and they will ski with a participant in the morning and in the afternoon, often the instructors go and free ski or do training or all sorts of things. And we do have some bursaries if anybody uh, has never gone before and would like a, a, an opportunity to go. I think we've got $500 bursaries for instructors and for some students this year. Uh, as well as some bursaries that might be available through BC Adaptive. Um, yeah, ends up being a really fun week of goofing off. And I mean, the highlights really are three o'clock APRE that's hosted by a different club every day where you just get to go and meet a hundred people that you didn't know. So really good time. So those are the important dates. Uh, Mark, thank you for making some time. If you got to take off, we'll talk to you soon. Yep. Thank uh, you. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thanks, Mark. Merry Christmas to you too. Bye-bye. Uh, just back to that conversation about uh, family and peer to peer program. So I think this idea of just putting them into the program will make sense as long as I kind of find a, a way to make sense when you look at it. But then we can just go in and just kind of add them to lessons quickly without having to do too, too much. If anybody has a better idea, I'm open to all of it. Um, it's something that I'm really passionate about to get the groups out there. But uh, it's yeah, it's, it's proven not to be the most eloquent, eloquent thing to uh, try and schedule. James, it was confusing last year when some of them were instructors because then they were getting instructor emails that they didn't understand. So mm. not having them as instructors would be helpful. Yeah, so well, and so I guess there, there are some family members that are instructors, uh, but if they've come through that, that, and yeah, I mean, they have been probably for years, they've been instructors or they actually have their cats, but. Actually, we had like three or four parents who were signed up, but had no intention of helping. Right. So it was just, yeah, it was a little messy. Yeah. We will, we will do better on the communication with all of them, but yeah, if they're in the, if they're in the family program, then they're going to, they are registered as students and the communication will flow through that way. Good. Uh, other things and stuff. Anybody want to talk about anything? This is our question and answer period. Sorry, I was late, so I only caught a portion of that, but I'm in the uh, lesson planning page, yep. and I'm not totally sure how to find the right instructors for my students. Yeah, so we'll go back into it for a sec, Tony. So uh, tools, you can see my screen okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm in a plan. Um, I've actually saved a plan, so if you want to edit that one. What's your plan called? It's called uh, Wednesday Mount Seymour Sit Ski at the bottom there. There you go. Yeah. So you have a student like Daniel. My, 
Maya's a student? Uh, yeah, Maya's a student. Yeah. Why am I hovering over and not getting anything? That was a similar issue I was having. Mine did that. I had to go to a different screen and then come back to it and then it worked again. Really hmm. Oh, no, that worked. Minimum number of instructors. Uh, okay, we'll go look at Maya in a second. Serge is a dad. Serge? Okay. So uh, when you guys accepted people, I'll just blame Simon because mm -hmm. I'm assuming it wasn't you because you're perfect, right? <laughs> sure. So, so these people have, so when you accepted people, they weren't given uh, credentials almost. So let's okay. go back out really quickly. If I go to the students, and we go to the Wednesday night, learn to ski. Mm -hmm. And if I go to accepted, oh, it does have it. Sitski, level one. Let's go back. Yeah. Because what, what I did was I just kind of made slots for every student and then I was trying to, I dragged them into their own slot, but then yeah. as I was trying to figure out which instructors I need to find for them, it wasn't <clears throat> clear to me. Cool. And then I guess yeah, the other question was if I if you press like let's say I'm trying to find an instructor that has, you know, for example, level yep. two, how, yep. I would choose that level two button right there on yep. the screen. Yeah. So okay. if you're looking for a Sitsky instructor level two, I see. Boom boom. Uh, oops, sorry. This part is you want your ski, you want your your instructor probably to be an alpine skier. Right. I don't think you have any Sitski instructors, do you? That I'm aware of? Uh, not in Sitskis, no. Yeah. So then uh, I see. Find people that are skiers available on Wednesday evening. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So then that'll show you on your oh, list who is available. Okay. I see. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So, so to that point, looking at Simon, because it's weird that Simon didn't come up as available which would tell me that he doesn't have his profile set up correctly. Mm. So let's pick on Simon because he's not here. <laughs> so on his availability, so this, I'll, I'll include this in my email too, uh, availability. Because if this isn't set up right, then it's going to make your scheduling really tricky. So he needs to be available for sure on Wednesday nights because that's when the program is. Does that make sense? So if, if your people yeah, don't even have their sense. program selected is yes, then there's no chance that you're going to be able to actually schedule for them. Yeah, understood. Uh, Wednesday. Now I'll go back to level two. Layla, can you stop that, please? Sorry. Thank you. So now Simon is available, although he's been he's been already put in a lesson. So. But now he's green. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So that's so yeah. So I'll put that in the, the email template. The people have to check their availability to make sure that it matches the program. Awesome. Anybody else have any other questions or thoughts or 
I am I am totally at your disposal too. So if if you all want to have a meeting with me to hammer out some stuff or talk about anything specifically to your program, I'm always available for that. Just let me know and we'll uh, grab some time either on Zoom or just on the phone or whatever, or on the ski hill or whatever you need. All good meetings happen on the ski hill. If there is nothing else at the moment, I will uh, say good night. I think. Merry Christmas, Alex. everyone. Alex, you're, you're, Alex is making yeah. fun of me. I don't even know what she's doing now. She's just trash and talking to me. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I will, I will copy Adam's sentiment. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope you have a wonderful, safe holiday. And uh, yeah, please reach out to me in the next week or two. If you have any questions, I'll get you this content uh, in the next week so that you can make some moves. I'll even try and do, I'll try and do a bunch of it tomorrow. And, uh, and yeah, we'll go from there. It should be, it's set up to be a very big, successful season. So I'm excited about it. Great. It's always nice, nice to see everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, James. Merry Christmas, Thank everyone. You. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Happy holidays. Bye.